Hey, welcome back to another devotional. We've been talking this week about the goodness of God. And uh, we started out in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, that if we're going to come to God, we must believe that He is and that He's a rewarder, that He's a beneficiary. Acts 10, 38 said, Jesus went about doing good at healing all those who were uh, sick. That doing good means He distributed benefits. Um, if you think about it, why did God create mankind? What did God possibly need from us to fulfill Him? Well, the answer is nothing. So then it only leaves us with one other answer, and that is God created you and I so that He could be our Abba Father, our provider, our protector, our lover, our companion. And that's what we've been talking about this week is the nature of God. And the idea we've been talking about is we will only exercise our faith, or another word for faith is confidence, or trust. We will only live in obedience to uh, the will and the plan of God to the degree that we understand the goodness of God. The more we understand the benevolence, the goodness, uh, the heart of God, and what even motivated Him to create mankind, to the degree we understand that, we will follow Him more passionately. We will obey Him more regularly. We will step out and take risks on behalf of His kingdom advancement more readily. So the degree we understand the goodness of God is the degree to which we will exercise faith. And so I want us to look here in Romans tap, uh, today as kind of our last devo for the week. And we're going to look into chapter 2. And Paul is writing here and he's, he's talking about people who judge others who aren't following God. And that's what chapter 1 is all about, is men and women who, although they had a knowledge of God in their hearts, chose not to retain a knowledge of Him, and they were given over to dark thinking, darkness. And I'm going to read today from uh, the Message Bible. And, uh, and this is where Paul wrote in chapter 2, verse 1, uh, about people who judge others who aren't living for the Lord. Those people are on a dark spiral downward. But if you think that leaves you on the high ground where you can point your finger at others, think again. Every time you criticize someone, you condemn yourself. It takes one to know one. Judgmental criticism of others is a well-known way of escaping detection of your own crimes and misdemeanors. But God isn't so easily diverted. He sees right through all such smokescreens and holds you to what you've done. You didn't think, did you, that just by pointing your finger at others, you would distract God from seeing all your misdoings and from coming down on your heart? Or did you think that because he's such a nice God, he'd let you off the hook? Better think this one through from the beginning. God is kind, but he's not soft. In his kindness, he takes us firmly by the hand and leads us into a radical life change. I like the way that the message puts that. That God is kind, but He's not soft. Many times, uh, because I consider myself a grace preacher, and the grace of God and the goodness of God leads us to repentance. That's what this verse actually reads here in the King James. Or do you despise the riches of His goodness, forbearance, and long suffering, knowing that the goodness of God leads us to repentance? Here it is in a nutshell. God is good, but that doesn't mean God is soft. It doesn't mean God's without without uh, guidance and 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 if you want to call them laws, call them principles by which he calls us to live by faith, even though we might want to do it another way, even though we think we've got a better plan. He says, this is what I, as a loving, benevolent God of goodness, am telling you is a lifestyle and actions that will lead to blessing in your life. Now all I do is ask you to trust me, trust my goodness, trust my character. And live according to these things and see how blessed you will be. And see how much of a blessing you will be to others. The goodness of God is not without um, guidance. And so it doesn't just mean we can live like what we want. We live like how He tells us is good and profitable for us. And guess what follows us? Goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our lives. Go today, trust in the goodness of His nature and character, and, and live your life in response to His goodness and see just how blessed you are and how great of a blessing you are to others.